Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I want to continue my series about book love by talking about the fantasy books that I read as a young person which I really loved and which I think shaped me um, as a reader and shaped my future as a reader. Um, so I'm calling this edition of Book Love uh, First Love Fantasy because my first reading love were fantasy books. And I think probably like most people, I started off fantasy book-wise by somebody giving me a set of uh, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. I don't think this is earth-shattering news. A lot of people probably started reading, whether they like fantasy or not, uh, by reading um, C.S. Lewis's books. And so did I, and I gave the, these books to my children as well. Um, so these are um, my kids' copies of the books, actually. These aren't actually my copies of the books. They came in a box set like this. Uh, my original set of the books came in a box set as well, uh, but that's long since probably disintegrated. Uh, also, since these are my kids' copies of the books, the two of the books are gone. Uh, I don't know whose bookshelf they're on, but The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and Prince Caspian are gone. So, you know, I really uh, read these books um, as a fairly young person, probably before the age of 12. Uh, I think I read uh, most of these books. They were a gift from my grandmother. Uh, and unfortunately, my grandmother had been told by someone, I don't know, maybe somebody at the bookstore, that the book to start with was The Magician, Magician's Nephew because it explained the creation of Narnia and that world. And I really think that was unfortunate. It put me off reading the books for a while because I didn't like this book at all. Uh, it just didn't feel... You know, it didn't feel particularly great to me when I read it. I didn't care for Diggory or Polly or their circumstances or really the story. But this is the book I started with. And then I went through, after that, I thought, well, to heck with that. I'm going to go through the book in the number in which they were ordered. Surely C.S. Lewis knew what he was doing, and of course he did. And so then I read the book straight through, and I read them. I read the ones I liked several times. Uh, in all honesty, I only read The Magician's Nephew once and The Last Battle once. And so I thought what I'd do with these is, since almost everybody, uh, or since most people probably read these or have read these, I was just going to go through and rank them in order of my uh, favorites um, uh, and see if that could you know, stir up some controversy or some com conversation in the um, comment section. So my favorite of all the books in the Chronicles of Narnia is The Horse and His Boy. I just like the story of this, you know, Long lost prince who kind of miraculously luckily finds his way back to the kingdom where he's supposed to live. This book is also somewhat controversial today. Uh, I wouldn't have known about this when I was, you know, 10, but it's controversial for its portray of, portrayal of Islam and the Muslim world. But that was my favorite book. My third favorite book in the series was The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Um, uh, or excuse me, this is my second favorite book in the series, is The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Um, I just liked the story. I liked all the islands they went to, all the weird stuff they encountered. I really liked that story. Plus, I liked um, uh, the sword-wielding mouse in this story and his dealings with, with Eustace, who, you know, Eustace is a great a transformative character in this series. And then probably after The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, I probably liked uh, Prince Caspian, uh, was probably my third favorite book because of all the battles and fighting in it. Then um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe would have been fourth. Um, the Silver Chair would have been fifth. I like the story, the underground uh, world story in this book. and It's pretty interesting uh, and creative and inventive. That would be my fifth favorite. Then The Last Battle, my sixth favorite. And as I told you earlier, The Magician's Nephew is easily my least favorite of all these books. So I read those books, and that kind of, you know, if you're, if you're inclined to like fantasy, those books kind of whet my appetite for, for something else. So those books led me directly to other fantasy series, which I'm not necessarily talking about in the order in which I read them. Another fantasy series I liked a lot were the Tom's Covenant series um, of books. Thomas Covenant, a leper in this world, is magically transported to... Uh, another uh, world in which there is an evil character named Lord Fowl, and only um, Thomas Covenant has the power to really overcome the evil of Lord Fowl. Now, I didn't read these actual books. Uh, this is a set of uh, first editions that my uncle, who loved to explore bookshops, uh, found for me. I read these books in paperback. Um, I remember uh, carrying, I think particularly... Uh, this one around and in the green paperback cover and it says 
uh, the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever, and the title of this one is The Power That Preserves. And I think a lot of uh, my uh, eighth grade classmates thought this was some kind of religious book or in some ways uh, an irreligious book. I remember having to answer a lot of questions from uh, some of my born-again Christian uh, friends about what these books were about. But I read the first series of books in paperback and then um, I was gifted uh, the other, uh, the second series over time as those books came out. And so the second Thomas, Cro Thomas Covenant Chronicle series begins with the Wounded Land, which is really uh, kind of the land of which Thomas Covenant had saved in the first series of books is beset with all kinds of environmental problems. Uh, and then there's the One Tree with this spectacularly goofy, you know, almost Star Trekian <laughs> costumed uh, characters on the front and the, and the strange uh, colors. Uh, which seems strange to me, called The One Tree, and then finally, uh, White Gold Wielder finished up the series in which Thomas Covenant ultimately triumphed. Stephen R. Donaldson was a, a was an important author to me, but these books were probably just a little bit, some of the themes in these books were probably just a little bit more adult than I was probably ready to deal with um, in this eighth, ninth grade, I think, when I read these, but they did leave an impression on me. Thomas Covenant, the main character, uh, he has this magical power because he, he possesses a white gold wedding ring and apparently the white gold in his wedding ring gives him magical powers and my wedding ring is made out of white gold. I think that's in part because of the Thomas Covenant series in part because my mom was a big fan of white gold jewelry. Um, after that, um, I probably, sometime after that, I found the Belgariad series by David Eddings, which is a series of five books all about a young character named Garion who who doesn't know that he has special powers or that he was destined to save uh, the land in which he lives, um, but he is. Um, he grows up with an aunt who knows his future and she takes care of him. He then meets up with the man who's going to take him and teach him all the things he needs to know. Um, he moves through um, the country. Let's see, I like all hand, I like all high fantasy books, there's a map uh, somewhat resembling the Tolkien maps. Uh, he moves to the countryside going essentially from one kingdom to another, having adventures in uh, almost all of them. Um, and so I read these books. And I remember uh, liking the series and thinking it was pretty good. I don't know how well it would hold up today, but I know that when I was in, in junior high school, one of the attractions of this book was that there was a, a teen romance between uh, Garion and uh, Sinedra, uh, his kind of female counterpart. And I, I, so there's probably a little bit of a YA romance element to it. It explains why I liked it. I probably read these books, you know, three or four times, you know, as when you're a young reader and you find something you like, you have a tendency to read it compulsively. Um, and I probably did that with the Belgarian. I also was a big fan of Terry Brooks, and in particular, this beat up old copy, uh, which was my original copy, this beat up old copy of the Sword of Shauna Ra, which I lost the dust jacket to uh, a long time ago. And I really liked this book. Again, uh, in part, you know, when you're a young man, um, you like books about uh, young men and their teenage years who uh, go on quests and have unexpected and extraordinary powers and fall in with a group of um, adventurers who are out to save whatever world they live in. You know, you can find elements of that certainly in the Belgariad. You can find elements of that on a more adult level in the Thomas Covenant Chronicles, but that really appealed to me. I also really liked these books. I don't know if it was me or my son who got the pages all schmutzy. I also really like these books because they have incredible illustrations in them, which right now I can't find one of, other than the first one I showed you. They had really great illustrations. Oh, there we go. I uh, like this picture here, uh, which I just thought were incredible illustrations to be in a book. And then in the middle, there's actually a centerfold. No, not like that kind of centerfold, which is falling out of my copy of a full color picture. And you can tell, if you haven't ever read this sort of uh, Shauna Ra, it's a quest story in which a young man uh, goes on a quest with a group of adventurers to save the world. And of course, it owes more than just a little bit 
uh, to J.R.R. Tolkien. So I read this book. I remember carrying it around uh, junior high and thinking it made me look smarter because it is so big and it's probably the first really long book I read. As a matter of fact, I remember thinking, wow, you know, 700 and something pages, that's longer than any other book I've read. And I was really impressed with myself. But I really liked the book. Um, a lot. And so then I got uh, the second in the series is The Elf Stones of Shana Ra, and I didn't care for this book nearly as much. Um, I, I just didn't think the story was as good. I didn't think it made as much sense. I thought it was kind of pushing it. And I don't like these goofy uh, cover art, which makes them look like they're in a Robin Hood story. That kind of bothered me as well. So I kind of fell off of this series. I think there was a third book in this series, but I didn't read that one because The Elf Sons of Shauna Ra really didn't do it for me. And I imagine like most people who get into reading fantasy as young people, that one of the most important books to me in that was The Hobbit. This is my; These are my original Hobbit and Lord of the Rings books, the paperbacks, which I got. Uh, for Christmas in 1977 in a box set for my mother. The box was uh, covered, was like a gold foil uh, cover with all these weird kind of mystical looking symbols on the outside and my mom bought them for me and um, thanks mom because it was probably the most single most important reading experience of my life. Um, so I read The Hobbit. Uh, this time I went probably and watched the logical order and you can see the covers falling off. Uh, there's even my little review right there. My terrible handwriting says this is a great book. Um, I read The Hobbit and I just I just love the story, particularly the part uh, about the riddles. I imagine that's pretty common uh, where um, Bilbo riddles with Gollum and then the story of him saving the dwarves in the barrels was particularly great uh, for me. And so that book then led, of course, directly to what were my favorite books in high school, and those were the Lord of the Rings books. You can see these are well-loved copies of those three books. Uh, and I would imagine that I read these books between the fifth grade and high school graduation. I would imagine I read this series eight or nine times. It became uh, a comfort to me. You know, I, I had a fairly easy teenage life. I didn't experience any traumas, and my parents were really great, but you know, all teenagers feel like uh, that they are misunderstood and so I or, or have problems. So to me, these books were just a source of comfort. The stories became so familiar and the characters became so familiar that reading them relaxed me. And so I would oftentimes just read straight through from the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring to the, to the end of the Return of the King and then just start the series over again. Um, and read them uh, one after the other. Uh, I don't know how you are about trilogies, but I, I'm kind of weird about trilogies. Maybe not. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. But I always love The Two Towers the best, and I've, I've figured out that in, in life I have a tendency in any trilogy to like the second one the best. That's true of the Star Wars movies, yes. I mean the first three Star Wars movies. So Episode Five, The Empire Strikes Back, is my favorite Star Wars movie. But these books then were, were the books, I think, that made me into a reader. Um, and while I'm not sure that you could compare Tolkien to, you know, other writers who are taken more seriously as literary artists, these books gave me the confidence to read anything. You know, they were long enough, the story was complex enough, the language was different enough in these books that as a young reader, when I felt like I had conquered and understood these books and thoroughly grasped, you know, what they were about, I really felt like I could read anything. So, you know, none of those, um, assigned readings in college or later in high school daunted me. I didn't read all of them. I didn't like all of them, but I knew I could read anything. And in part, I got that confidence from reading the Lord of the Rings books as a young man. So in lots of ways, this first love fantasy um, obsession I had as a young man uh, launched me into, you know, a more mature reading world and uh, gave me confidence and made me the reader I am today. So let me know what you think uh, about the books uh, in my series, what I said about the Chronicles of Narnia and the order of the books being my favorite. If you've read in these series or what you think about them, or if you've recently read them, I'd really love to, uh, to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching.